Hey guys, Josh here, and in today's video, let's go over some exciting farming games news. We have a surprising Switch port, a roadmap for Omega Crafter, and dates for the releases of Echoes of the Plum Grove, Sunnyside, and for the first trailer of Tales of the Shire. Let's start with the announcement of a Nintendo Switch port for Before the Green Moon. This is an indie farming game that released on Steam in March of 2023, I did not hear a lot of people talking about it, which is why this port took me by surprise, but it's quite a unique experience that is worth considering. Before the Green Moon is a sci-fi themed game where you move to a small community living at the base of a space elevator, and you get ready to depart for the moon. I'll admit that the gameplay is not the best, the farming is bare bones, a bit clunky, and there's not that many things to do, but everything is in the atmosphere. Graphics are very reminiscent of the PlayStation 1 era, it's a bit gloomy and weird, and my favorite part is when it rains, I just love to walk around, listen to the sounds and enjoy the scenery. It's quite hard to put into words, but for some reason this game feels very 90s. Whenever I played it, I felt a sense of nostalgia, just as if this was a game from my childhood, even though it's obviously not. If you're interested in what you see, I think it is an experience worth trying just for the aesthetics and the vibes but I wish the gameplay had more to offer as it is a bit underwhelming right now. This is definitely not a game for everyone, it is different, but I'm glad it exists and that it's coming to the Nintendo Switch on April 30th. Next, some very quick news about Cornucopia, which is available on Steam since July of last year, is now releasing on Humble Games. Cornucopia is a farming game in early access, I'll most likely make a full review once it's fully released, but I streamed it a few times and I've had a blast every time. It's very quirky, I love the humor and dialogues, there's so much to do, so many different festivals, minigames, unique farming mechanics where you have to keep an eye on the different nutrients, and it can feel overwhelming to be honest at first, but I do think it is a game that deserves more recognition. Right now, it's 20% off on Humble Games, and if you're interested, I have an affiliate link that will support the channel. Actually, you can support the channel at any time by buying your games on Humble instead of directly on Steam or the Nintendo eShop. Plus, there are often very good deals on there, so feel free to check that out with the links in the description. Next, let's talk about Omega Crafter. This is a crafting and base building game in early access, in which you can program these robots called Grammys in order to automate your work. They just published a roadmap, so I wanted to take a look at it together. But first, let me give you my quick thoughts on the game so far, after about 10 hours of playtime. You create your character and your companion, Grammy, and then you arrive in this procedurally generated open world. You find a place to build your first base, and very quickly you unlock more Grammys that can be programmed however you'd like. So you have different coding blocks, like try this, then if it fails, try that, repeat this a certain number of times, and then you have actions like pick up an item, move somewhere, count something, craft, and many, many more. There are so many possibilities, and if you're creative, you can come up with clever algorithms for your Grammys, but you can also keep things simple with presets allowing them to farm and craft without needing you to think too hard. I think a game like this can be a great way to introduce people to programming in an approachable way, and it's extremely satisfying when you finish your code and you see your Grammys working. The game also supports online multiplayer, and from what I've played so far, it was very seamless, and your friends can join your world with their existing character, which is so convenient. But Omega Crafter is not without flaws at the moment. Decorating can be a bit tricky, as to build anything, you first need to place these cobblestones CD tiles, which don't look the best, and I wish there were more different types of tiles you could use, and you will have to do a lot of terraforming, but it can take a little bit of time getting used to, which can make it hard to get things at the right height if you want to make your base look pretty. There's also not that many things to build or work towards, so usually in games with automation, stuff will get exponentially more expensive, so you'll have to scale things up and make sure your production lines are as efficient as possible. But currently in Omega Crafter, you do need to produce some items to convert them into bits and increase your world level, which will unlock more things, but it doesn't really matter that much what you produce, and you don't need a lot of items to craft things, and everything just feels too simple. I have lots of Grammys working and producing stuff, but unfortunately right now it doesn't really feel like I need everything that they're making. Outside of your base, you can find some enemy camps and dungeons, but they're all pretty much the same, which makes exploration a bit repetitive. So overall, the game has really interesting features, 
but it feels like they're not being used to their full potential. However, remember that the game is in early access, so they recently posted a roadmap and they will be adding new coding blocks, giving you more ways to program your Grammys. They'll add fishing and overall just more stuff like new biomes, dungeons, items, enemies, skills, and more. The roadmap is a bit vague for now, but I'm hoping that this new content will give players a bit more of an incentive to keep playing and to do more with the automation and programming features of the game. They also said that they would revise the roadmap based on the player's feedback, so even though there is still a lot of work to do and the game definitely has this early access feel to it, I am hopeful for its future and looking forward to seeing it evolve. If you've been playing Omega Crafter, let me know your thoughts in the comments as I'm curious to know how other people's experience with the game has been so far. Next, one game I've been looking forward to for a while now is Echoes of the Plum Grove. This is a game that they describe as cozy with consequences, so yes, it is a cute farming game, but also you can catch diseases, you have to make sure you have enough food saved for winter, and if you're not careful about these things, your character will pass away. But the game doesn't end there, as you'll get to continue playing as your child or another member of your family. The whole game is based around the idea of an ever-changing community. People will die, new villagers will move in, they can get married to each other, they can have children, and so on. No matter what you do in your life and on your farm, things will happen with the other characters in the community, and if you've played Kinseed, it's a pretty similar idea to that. I played the demo a few times, I found the demo a bit too short to properly evaluate the gameplay loop and all of the features, but I did really like the atmosphere, the colonial era outfits, the customization, and the humorous dialogues. It is such a charming game, and the developers have announced that it will be getting its full release on Steam this April 29th. If you're craving more information about Echoes of the Prom Grove, I do have a 30 minute long interview with the developers. They are so nice and they shared a lot about their inspiration, their thought process, and so much more, so please check that out. Of course, I'll also post a review on this channel around the 29th, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. One more game that got a release date is Sunnyside, coming to Steam on May 24th, then PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S on July 10th. This game has been in development for a long time, but still, this release date is a bit sooner than I expected. I played the game a few times, the alpha in 2021, and the demo more recently, which is still available on Steam. I did have a really fun time, but I don't know if the game feels ready quite yet. While it did improve over the years, there is still a good amount of bugs and things that need a bit more polish. For example, the characters being fully clothed in the hot springs, or the ability to go on a date in the tea house before even having built the tea house. My feeling is that maybe they had some pressure from their publisher to release the game now, and then we'll have to wait for things to be added or fixed after the release, but I really hope that I'm wrong and that the game will be fully ready on May 24th. Sunnyside has lots of fun ideas. It brings modern features like a cell phone to contact other characters, take pictures or order seeds online, a bicycle and vehicles to move around easily, a hose to water crops, and so much more. The characters are also pretty interesting from the bit that I played, and I'm very excited to be checking it out when it releases. The demo lets you play the first 10 days of the game, so I would recommend you try it, and if you do, let me know what you think and if you'll be getting the full game in the coming months. If you're interested in some merch, they're also launching a plush of Sparky, the robot companion that you'll have in the game. The plush is being done through Makeship, so it's only available for a limited period of time, and it's crowdfunded, so they need to sell a certain amount for the plushie to get produced. I think that the plushie looks cute, but personally I feel like they should have probably waited until after the launch of the game, as except for people that have been following the game closely, most people and like the general public don't know about Sparky or even the game yet, so I don't know if they will meet their goal, but if you want to, maybe get one of these plushies, now is your chance. Of course, I'll put the link in the description to that as well. And now the last bit of news for today is what I'm the most excited for right now. In case you missed it, last year we got the announcement of a cozy game based in the Lord of the Rings universe called Tales of the Shire. You will play as a hobbit, it's planned to release in 2024 for PC and consoles, but we don't know which consoles and we just don't know too much about the game at all. The first teaser from September 2023 showed a woman writing in a book, but it was not game footage, making it really hard to judge anything. But recently they started posting some very short videos showing some of the game's environments. We have two 7 seconds videos, 
where we can see hobbit houses, a river, and just what looks like a very cozy place to be in. I like the style that they're going for, it's colorful and happy, but also not too saturated, giving the game a bit more of a mature vibe. There's lots of details everywhere, flowers, bushes, fences, there's no empty area, and I think we can see a scarecrow near a gardening plot here, so there should be gardening. And it all looks very busy, but in a good way, and it actually reminds me of Rune Factory Frontier. While it does look beautiful, it also does not look too demanding in terms of performance, like the textures seem pretty simple, the lighting and shadows as well, foliage is not extremely detailed, which gives me hope that this might release for the Nintendo Switch, but of course we'll have to wait for a proper trailer or announcement to know for sure. And we won't have to wait for too long as they told us to mark our calendars for a trailer on April 22nd. I'm so excited for this game, I love what I'm seeing so far and I can't wait to see actual gameplay. I'll most likely post a video on the 22nd with my thoughts on the trailer so don't miss that out if you're as excited as I am about Tales of the Shire. And that is it for the most recent farming games news. We're getting so much good stuff recently, let me know what you're the most hyped for. For me it's Tales of the Shire but I'll definitely be having a lot of fun with all of these other games until then. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.